What would you do if I told you there were cheaper, cleaner, safer alternative to cigarettes? And what would you do if you were the government and I told you there were a cheaper, cleaner, safer alternative to cigarettes? Welcome to Rectum. I'm Sean and I'm going to answer those questions in just a moment. But first, let me ask you to go ahead and click subscribe and click the bell icon and you'll get a, you'll get a little notification whenever I post new content. The cheaper, safer, cleaner alternative to cigarettes is, of course, e-cigarettes. Now, before you click off because of all the bad e-cigarette news you've heard lately, just, just listen, watch this video, be sure to be good. You're going you're gonna to like it, especially if you're a smoker. You may really like it. First, I'm going to tell you my journey with e-cigarettes, and then I'm going to tell you the government's journey with e-cigarettes. So here's my journey. It all started uh, when I was uh, a youngster and I started smoking. I took up smoking uh, like many youngsters do. Um, then I decided that smoking wasn't cool anymore after I had uh, you know, changed friends, became a grown-up, and it wasn't the, the, the thing to do. So I struggled with quitting smoking a lot for years. I it was patched gum. Uh, I had a little a device that you put your pack in and you, and you squeeze it and it pokes holes in the cigarettes to um, kind of allow more air to come through. And I just found that if I put my fingers, position my fingers right, I could cover up those holes. And that, I defeated that, I outsmarted the $10 little smoking, anti-smoking device. At any rate, nothing worked. I would chew gum when I couldn't smoke. And I think that for me, chewing gum just made my tobacco or my nicotine craving worse because I would chew gum, spit out the gum, and, and light up a cigarette. I know a lot of you do that. I know a lot of you are in positions where you can't smoke at work or, or even on campus, even at the workplace. So, uh, for instance, the parking lot. Um, so you chew gum or wear a patch. And I did those things. I'm with you. I was there. I did that. <clears throat> so, along comes my firstborn and we had a little party for him, a little birthday party, and I put him in bed after the party and I went outside to smoke and thought to myself, wow, I have a year old baby uh, or child and I'm a smoker and I am engaging in an activity that is the number one cause of preventable death. Number two is obesity. But I'm working on the number one cause of preventable death, smoking. And I'm out there smoking, thinking to myself, what am I doing? With a, I have a child who will depend on me, who does depend on me. And I'm smoking. I'm killing myself right now with the cigarette. What do I do? Well, of course, like any good smoker, I plan one more time to quit smoking. By golly, I'm going to do it. This time I'm going to quit smoking. And I finish the pack. Because you gotta finish the pack. You have to, if, if you're a smoker and you know, if you try, you've tried to quit, you say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get through this one pack, or this one carton. If you, I always bought by the pack because I thought every day I was gonna quit, this will be my last pack. Well, this time, my son's birthday, I quit him. And you know what happened? I woke up, I finished off the pack, about four or five cigarettes left, just kinda hung out on the porch. It was a nice, cool evening in Tucson, uh, finished. Went, to, went in the house, did my thing, chewed the gum. I always had the gum, I always had the patch. Uh, chewed the gum, went to bed, got up the next day. Went to one of the e-cigarette shops or the vape shops. And I talked to the person behind the counter. Um, I remember it was a girl. Uh, see, what happened was they changed locations. They expanded, they got bigger and bigger and bigger and they moved to another location. Um, but I'm just trying to picture who I dealt with or with whom I um, got situated with the e-cigarette. Anyway, I described you know, how much I smoke, what I smoke, because I smoked uh, menthol cigarettes, um, where I smoked, uh, how, all, the, all of my smoking habits, we talked about that. So anyway, she said, okay, you need a 60 milligram bottle of the e-juice, e you need um, this flavor will give you the same kind of feeling of a nicotine cigarette, blah, blah, blah. I got it. It's not the kind I recommend right now because I've tried prior to that the kind you find at the gas station and at Walgreens um, these brands that you put the, the battery is all there it's you take and they take out the little cartridge and you throw it when you put on a new flavor they don't work they don't give you a big puff um, the e-cigarette the e shops with 
e-cigarettes, they give you the big puff, they give you the big hit, they give you the feeling, go there, don't bother with that stuff at the, uh, at the gas station. So anyway, I get it, it feels good, I'm at 60 milligrams, and I'm liking it. And here's a key, little side note for you, those of you who are gonna try it, or are already trying it and struggling with it, use your e-cigarette the same way you use a cigarette. No, don't put a match to it. No, don't put a lighter to it or your cigarette thing in the car. Your same habits. You're uh, going out into the, on the, into the backyard to smoke because you don't smoke in the house. Going to the garage to smoke because you don't smoke in the house. Only doing it when you're uh, driving your car. Those kinds of things. Don't smoke on campus at work if there's no smoking allowed at work. Leave the campus or wait until you're out of work. Do all of the same things. It should replace the cigarette. Now, I did that, it replaced the cigarette, and it worked. Didn't feel like having a cigarette at all. I, this was such a smooth transition, never noticed it. So, I'm using it, and then each time I got a refill of the bottle, these little e-juice bottles, they put in the liquid, they'll put in the flavor, they'll put in the nicotine, and you drip it into a little tank. Um, whenever that bottle ran out, I would go in, I would get a new bottle with like five milligrams less nicotine. And every time I went for a refill, it was less nicotine until I was at zero milligrams of nicotine. You don't have to have nicotine when you vape. So I'm vaping, no nicotine. But the satisfied, this satisfied the, the motion, the, the smoking thing, it had that. I had that feeling. I could draw. It had the same kind of resistance as a cigarette. It felt so close, except it was a bigger, it was a battery, a big thing. Um, not one of the giant ones, you see these guys, people using it, it was a much smaller one. But it had, you know, it had a battery and it had a plastic tip rather than the paper, cigarette tip. But otherwise, the feeling of, this, of the smoke on the uh, windpipe, and in the mouth, and the flavors, and the plume was so similar. I didn't think of a cigarette, and I'm at zero. And then we went away, I forgot it. We went away for a long weekend, I forgot it. Um, and we came back, I'm like, oh, I broke, all the habits are gone. I gave it away and I haven't smoked since. This has been almost, it's been seven and a half years. No smoking, no vaping, nothing, done. I've quit. So this is a way to quit. And that is how I did it. And uh, I hope that helps you. And I hope that works. But now on to the government. What would the government do? I asked the question earlier. And what would you do if you were the government and you found a cleaner, safer, cheaper alternative to cigarettes? I'll tell you what you would do. First thing, cut it down. Get that competition out of there. Each pack of cigarettes nets the government, the federal government, a little more than a dollar for every pack. So every smoker that smokes a pack a day dollar to the federal government, then local and state, everybody gets their little cut. I've read that it's three or four dollars a pack in taxes. Government doesn't want to see that decrease in revenue. The government and the media want to vilify e-cigarettes. Here's how they do it. Here's the first way. Exploding batteries. We've seen the videos of people, uh, surveillance cameras at stores where they chop at yanking at their pockets or trying to get their pants off because the battery caught fire. It just turned out to be like a couple instances, uh, wasn't the end of the world. Uh, phone batteries do it, all kinds of these batteries, the chemistry. Uh, sometimes they catch fire. We haven't heard about that in years. They're really, really safe when you think about it. Uh, and the next one is, the most recent one, is you're going to die. If you smoke an e-cigarette or if you vape, it's the same thing. You'll immediately die in the long term of just a couple of months. How's that sound? Uh, you'll vape and your lungs will be destroyed and you'll need lung transplants. That's the thing. Then it turns out they didn't report much on this. They reported on the lung transplants and you're getting sick all day long. They didn't report on the little part of it that it was um, vitamin E acetate, I think it was called, used to thin THC. The THC is really, really thick and it has to be thinned before it's put into the vape. And guess what? That vitamin E acetate was destroying people's lungs. And a lot of people, uh, I, last I heard it was a couple hundred people got really, really sick and damaged their lungs 
pretty severely because of it. The normal vapors that use uh, propylene glycol, a sweetener, are unharmed, or are safe. Um, they do it all the time. So the government wants to keep you from vaping. They're gonna do whatever they can to keep you from vaping. It's your job if you vape to stand up and call your congressman, call your senators, call everybody, write letters and tell them no. It's the THC and it's these homemade brews that people were having that caused the problems. And if you don't think, if you're watching this because you wanna watch it because you like my videos or you're interested in learning a little bit about vaping, the probably glycol that they use for vaping, you've already inhaled. Your kids have probably inhaled it. Um, it's used in smoke machines for Halloween displays. Uh, at concerts, it's the fog machine. That's the liquid. It's a sweetener that we consume. It's safe. The FDA says it's safe. Nicotine, relatively safe. It's a stimulant, pretty safe. The flavorings, safe. All of it's safe and vaping it. It, why they use it is because it's got a low smoke point. You just apply a little heat and it will turn into smoke. And then you can vape it. And you can feel fine vaping it. It's that THC stuff that these people were making and this, this knockoff counterfeit vape stuff. Don't bother with that. Think about the regular cigarette shops, e-cigarette e stores. Think about going there. Think about the legitimate storefront, big store. Some of these places are big, huge, and there's a lot of them. So if you're looking to quit smoking, you don't have to look far to get to an e-cigarette shop. So I'm rambling. Now I'm noticing that I'm talking a lot. What, what this boils down to is government doesn't want you to quit smoking. They tell you they want you to quit smoking. I'm sure they would be happy if you crushed up your pack and threw it away. But this competition of e-cigarettes, they're not happy with that. And they're looking to stop that. So take it with a grain of salt. It's really, really safe. It's made of safe things. It's made of things that we can actually consume. So to wrap it up, try, try the e-cigarette. Um, it worked well for me. Follow my advice, follow what I did in my plan and maybe it will work well for you. I'm Sean, you have tuned in to Rectum and please go ahead and click subscribe and I will see you again real soon. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.